The Skull and Bones Endgame is a monster and just came with some massive changes in patch 1.3. Hey everyone, I'm Caveman. I'm a top 1000 player on the leaderboard and have several friends in the top 100. I'm gonna be sharing the strategy that we believe will now be the best, whether you're starting from scratch, just getting the helm open, or you're a veteran player with over 100 hours of gameplay. Now, if you watched this video or this video, they still have core strategies that I would suggest watching, especially if you're new, if you have time, you know, Know, while you're eating dinner, go ahead and watch it. They are a little bit lengthy and I'm, I can be dry at times, but uh, feel free to check those out. Um, but I will be going over the key changes first in this video and then my suggested strategy. And then feel free to check along the timeline for chapters. I'm also separating it by pieces of eight you earn per day for one hours of work, uh, or really only 30 minutes. But that's how I'll be separating it. So let's go ahead and jump in to the patch notes. And uh, starting with the most destructive, impactful change, and that is to efficient shipping. Uh, this upgrade uh, would basically increase the gain that you would get from trade routes to your different factories. And this was pretty significant, especially for the number one city, Harufu. Uh, what was happening was it was being additive instead of multiplicative uh, in their percentage um, gain. And so it was resulting in a 55% bonus gain instead of a 7.5%. Uh, so that's supposed to be 50 instead of 2.5. That's a huge, huge, huge decrease there. And for Harufu, we can take a look at the math real quick. Um, it went from 522 pieces of an hour down to 156. That's a 70% stab in the heart. Goodbye you know, pieces of eight production. And it's not just pieces of eight that got hit, it's silver because one funding here, so 40 grand to fund that, would last five or six storage capacities. So almost 50K in pieces of eight. Now you fund that once, you get like 7,800, making the silver very, very, you know, important to hold on and fund only the best factories, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, it, it also, this, this update, really just makes it so it's impossible for anyone who's trying to climb the leaderboard to get up there. It just makes those uh, people at the top of the leaderboard in, in a better position. Uh, and it's gonna be rough to, to try and catch up. So that, that's that upgrade update. The next one is just another major impact to our wallet. What were you thinking Ubisoft? Uh, this was something we thought was a feature. Uh, basically when you went out, for a roving supply contract, you destroy that helm ship and you get double the helm mat, you'd be going home. I got these, I'll, I'll refine them into to gold skull gin, gold skull rum, and everything will be good. We'll all be happy, we'll have unlimited silver. That's gone uh, because this only gives you now half. Uh, and that really hurts your book. If I was doing the economics on that, uh, you know, if you have your, your supply roving contracts, you get all four of them, you know, and I've done all the, I've, calculated, you know, fast travel costs, how much it costs to refine them. You'll get this many helm mats for all four of those roving supply missions. And then I also added the just regular supply missions where you have to pay 600 silver for 144 mats. Um, I went through the whole steps of refining them, selling them, funding the factories. You can only fund about six uh, meaning your your piece of eight production is roughly capped at 22,000 per hour uh, if you do the roving uh, supply contracts every hour. That's pretty much as much as you can fund. So choosing your six factories is really important. Obviously, you can get a little bit more uh, for the uh, better, uh, better uh, cities. There's three that actually have the ability to produce two visits. Uh, so this is a nice little spreadsheet by Acidello. Uh, he posted this in the Discord. Thanks uh, for, for sharing. This is huge. Uh, and you can, from these three, you can get like 9,000 uh, plus pieces of eight for one funding. So those three are pretty important. Um, and then he, he, you know, you can scale down. But I'll talk about the top seven cities that I think you should use later on but let's go ahead and move on either way that the, the silver going away means you're gonna be very methodical on where you put that otherwise you're gonna be broke um, this is from some comments last uh, couple videos where they were not getting pieces of eight when you would sink a merchant ship uh, doing a delivery order so trying to deliver the uh, helm mats for a for pieces of eight uh, they weren't getting anything and so that was actually a bug hopefully you'll be able to get those pieces of eight when you sink it and don't waste your silver paying them for that and then 
they did actually have one good update in this patch and that is to the manufacturing duration and capacity for all the lower level uh, one through nine. This is huge. This is actually game changing for anyone just starting the game. This actually makes it really quite interesting and fun. And it doesn't mean you have to grind out 50 to 100 hours to unlock everything in the helm. It's actually very easy to, to grow with this now. Um, and, and you can see that right here. I've been upgrading uh, Oko Ho Nana. I, I don't know how to pronounce it very well, but uh, that one, I, I only had, I ran at level five, uh, but I leveled it up. And you can see that, you know, with the new funding hours that the silver, the pieces of eight per silver uh, really increased uh, before this was like 0 0.06 or something. It does still increase. So level 10 factories will always be better uh, for production wise uh, generally. So you want to try and, and get up there uh, for this city specifically. You know, if we inverse that, it's producing uh, a piece of eight per seven silver. So one piece of eight costs seven silver. Uh, at the high end, I think uh, back to Acidello's sheet, um, it can go to 4.21. So it costs 4.21 silver per piece of eight. So that's really quite uh, the, the best you can do. Uh, and if you ever wanna do trades with uh, friends or, or people in the community, that's probably the rate you wanna do it. If you're gonna buy some uh, piece of eight, maybe in, you know double that max or like 10, um, but anyways, so that's that. That's really important for silver, uh, pieces of eight per silver. But then the storage upgrades are absolutely huge. Now, when you upgrade, you're actually getting basically a one-to-one -one, uh, for several of these levels that are really impactful. Um, really, the level four to level five going to a thousand, you get 500 storage for 500 pieces of eight. That is so nice for just trying to ramp up your early um, empire and get out of the Red Isle and un unlock new area. That's gonna be huge. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and jump in to the goals. Uh, so your goal is to unlock all of the blueprints, the sandbook schematic, and then the, the two epic furniture that are in the uh, helm store. Uh, you will need to upgrade your smuggler operations book to level 22 and then you need to get 11 cities to level five. You don't need to get them any higher than that. Uh, if you choose these these 11 cities, you should be good to go there. And if we follow the path, you should be good. And we're gonna open up the East Indies. Uh, that's what you're gonna be doing. So really, you get 117,000, you're gonna be able to unlock everything that you need in the game. And then obviously, if you're trying to just build up a cool empire, you can push past that. And I have a couple tips right at the end. So at the beginning, you're gonna do your supply orders. Every, every time, in, in, the whole let's go back to the strategy of this the whole strategy is that you come into play you got one hour to play you should only spend 30 minutes grinding the end game your other 30 minutes doing whatever you want to do go hunt some beasts take down the, some cool bosses or do what uh, pvp events that you want to participate in um so starting off you're always going to do that supply order so do the supply roving mission and the uh, supply delivery or sorry the supply buying the helm mats those you should always be doing and that will give you uh, the required silver output later on that you're going to need then you're always going to be doing your hostile takeovers uh, at the beginning to unlock the four main cities in the red isles uh, so these are the four ones that you should be focusing on so you need tanjova and these three so you have a nice little route going um, back to saint anne you're going to fast travel here um, and get all five of these to, or all four of these to level five, uh, starting with Tanjova, uh, Anko, Ho, Nana, and then the other two. Uh, and that'll give you enough production to get out of the Red Isles, and then you can unlock the East Indies. So if we go back to the Empire, um, you're going to start off though by just doing delivery orders. Uh, you just need to spend three days doing that. You'll get like roughly 250 per day, uh, and then you can really level up uh, Tanjova to level five um, on the fourth day, and then you basically can then level uh, Anka. Anko Honana to level five on that fifth day pretty easily. And so then you have two nice level five cities. You also uh, could collect the other two cities that are along the path back to St. Anne. And that'll give you uh, you know, a good amount that you can upgrade your smuggler operations to level seven because you will need to get that gold skull rum that unlocks that ability. And what gold skull rum does is you can sell that back to Skurlock for 250 per pop and that will help you really get enough silver to fund till basically the end game or at least for a while um so you'll be able to do that 
you're going to level five the other two um, cities on that supply route. So these two right here and right here, and then you'll be able to have that completely maxed out within just a few days, uh, I think nine days. So that's nine hours worth or really 30 minutes per day for those nine sessions. Um, then you're going to unlock the East Indies. And once you unlock the East Indies, you're really going to need to then start focusing on hostile takeovers again. And while you're doing the hostile takeovers, you're going to spend your currency, your uh, pieces of eight, upgrading that supply or that operations book to level 22 again. So smuggler operations, that first book, really important to get that to level 22 uh, because then you're going to need uh, more supplies from your roving missions and from all the other locations. And that'll help you fund the empire as you continue growing. Um, for the East Indies, what you need to be focusing on is the X, red X's first. Those are definite. You need those. Now, I have two different routes, and this is up to you of which cities you want to put your money into or your pieces of eight. I have the green route. This is the time efficient route. As you can see, it's a lot more condensed. You can quickly go around. I think it takes like 15 minutes to do that one. Um, and so, you know, you're going to fast travel to the Ran Rock Cave here, pick up, pick up pick up, go to green, and then um, go back down here. And those would be your seven cities that you could pick up. Um, and, and really, that, that's the fastest route that has really good silver efficiency. Now, the blue route is the optimal silver efficiency path. You'll fast travel down here. You'll pick up this city, the red X's, and then you have to pop over here to this blue one and pop back. And that's like the top seven. And, and if you go to our new outputs, I have those listed right here. So you can decide which of those you want. Um, time optimized path is in green. So those are the ones that you wanna do. And then the silver optimized path. So yeah, that's the time optimized path and then the silver optimized path. This is just where you literally get the most pieces of aid per funding. Uh, and that is these uh, these green ones. And then you add in Kotolama and Kampong Subur. I'm probably pronouncing those wrong as well. I do skip over Lar, West Lemur. You could add this into your route if you want, but Lar is like down here. I think it's this one specifically. And that's just a huge travel. There's no uh, fast travel point that's nearby. Uh, and so you'd have to like really go down and grab it and then go to Tuluk. It just, it's not worth my time. Uh, I'm trying to make that worth it. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how you do the silver optimized path. And uh, so going back to our daily stuff, so we've now started to fund and upgrade those cities. Um, you're gonna, you know, have to focus on that. You're gonna be doing both routes, as I just mentioned. And once you get all of those cities to level five, so the 11 cities, you're gonna be popping up 11K per day. You just fund it once uh, the day before, then you go. Easy day to collect uh, 11K really fast. So seven days there, you'll unlock all the weapons and furniture in the sandbook sigmatic you're good to go uh moving forward there uh if you have more interest in just building a larger empire uh what i would suggest then is leveling up all of your cities evenly have them all grow together uh and then you'll be able to really start um uh cranking up a little bit faster but you will cap out at around thirty-one thousand uh because of uh, silver uh production. Uh, so you could start doing those supply plunders to make up for that. And then you can continually increase. Um, but that's what I would do. And then if you really do want to push past that, just go in the output section, East Indies and figure out what you want to add uh, based on the next route. Or maybe you want to try and incorporate an Africa route uh, in. But uh, that is basically what you have to do to really grow. And that is really, I mean, it it's a grind and it sucks, but I think that once, you know, season two, we keep hearing about fleet management. I, I hear rumors that that is what you're, you're no longer going to be going out and collecting it. So what I do is when I'm not grinding and I'm actually like destroying ships and, and having fun uh, hunting beasts, I keep building new ships. Anytime my inventory gets too big, I build another ship and then I equip it with all my furniture and weapons. And I have like, I don't know, 30 ships now just on standby. So as soon as this goes live, I have a full fleet ready to do all my harvesting for me for the next season. That's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please smash that like button and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time at Caveman Logging Off.